in the flight plan part, we have to set up everything in a certain sequence. You see, the aircraft now knows when you select the flight plan that you're flying from your departure airport to this is your arrival airport. And that is it. It does not know where you're going to go from your departure. In fact, it doesn't even know how to get out of your departure as you haven't selected any runway for use, any SID. It doesn't have any in route segment, it just says flight plan discontinuity. And you haven't told it which arriving runway you expect, if there's a star or anything else. And that's what we need to build. When we build it, we build it in a certain sequence. So we will start by, as we did from the init A page, selecting the from and the to. We now have the two points, but we need to connect them. From, we will then select the runway for use, the SID, and the waypoints that includes the climb, the cruise, and the descent. We will then go to our arrival airport, our destination. We will then select what runway we choose or expect to use, the approach, and any star that might be applicable. Once we have selected that, we will connect the first point of that approach or that star with the last point on our in route segment. And that gives us a complete flight plan profile. If we have an alternate, we will do the same thing from our destination through again a departure out and then an in route and then an arrival and a landing runway at our alternate, if that is. So this is how we set it up. How do we enter information into a departure? We use either lateral or vertical revision. Now that we're on the fly plan page, the line select keys right here have a different function. If I select any of the left keys here, I'm saying I want to change something from that point that is in line with that key, but I want to change that in the lateral plane. That means if I want to change something on a fly plan, fly plan is lateral. But if I want to set in something in the vertical plane, that could be time, altitude, or speed constraints, well then, I will use the right keys right here next to that particular data label or that waypoint. You see, changing something in the lateral plane or changing something in the vertical plane is not the same, but each can be done from the same waypoint. At that waypoint, do you want to change something from where you're going, lateral, or do you want to change something in the altitude, the speed you have to be at, or the time you have to be at that waypoint? That will be a vertical revision. Since our flight plan here requires us to fill in all the waypoints, that will be the lateral plane. So I'm going to do a lateral revision. Starting here with clicking the lateral revision key next to Lima, Foxtrot, Bravo, Oscar. This is our departure airport. And it takes us into this page. You see, lateral revision from Lima, Foxtrot, Bravo, Oscar. I have the option of choosing what do you want to do at this waypoint. I want to select a departure. So I click here. Once I select that, it gives you a list of the departure runways available for that airport. I will, from the options here, select the departing runway based on my ATIS. And for me today, that will be my runway 14 right. Once I've selected that, you can see up here that it put the runway 14 right up here and it's now asking me, well, from that runway, we have available these SIDs. Which one would you like to fly out from? At large airports, you almost always fly out using an SID. It's part of the traffic flow management. But at smaller airports, less congested airspaces, you might just be required to fly runway heading or being given specific instructions at which you will scroll down and you'll find that it says at the bottom here, none. If your SID is not on the list here, you can use the up key here, the arrow up, to scroll through and see the ones that are below. 
right, so they have been cleared via the fist 5 alpha so I will select that it puts it up here and asks me now if I want to choose if there are any a specific transition point into the inroad segment today the actual departure ends at the fist VOR which is the last point on this SID so there's nothing to choose once I'm happy with the departure here I will click temporary flight plan right here when I click that it brings me back to the flight plan page but if you notice that the colors changed and I'm now getting a prompt down here to insert temporary or erase temporary whenever you operate on the or whenever you're changing information on the flight plan page here you are changing information on the active flight plan and if the aircraft is operating the aircraft will be flying navigating using this flight plan so making changes to it you should be prompt are you sure that you would like to insert and change this because it could have an impact on the remaining flight so whenever you're on a temporary flight plan stop to think is this in fact what i want to change and whenever we operate here on the flight plan we have the nd display in front of us in plan mode this is mandatory selecting plan mode selecting a range that is appropriate for you to see this information on a plan view on a 2d image once you have verified that that is in fact the right sequence the right waypoints and this is correct then you can insert the information it's like making a draft and before inserting it before making it public you're going to want to double check it we double check on the nd display using the plan mode I'm not quite done with my flight plan though because this was only the SID and to show you that there's nothing more on the flight plan from this point on I will use my airport key or my up arrow here to scroll through the flight plan now why would I use the up key if I want to see information that as you can see here they're in sequence from top to bottom but I want to see information that is below well you got to think of it like this this right here is one long scroll of information the information you want to see is below so you're going to want to move this up to be able to see what is below and so by using the up key we're able to see here as we scroll up that the last entry the last waypoint we have right now is Fisto and then there's a flight plan there's continuity and the aircraft doesn't know where to go from there into the arrival airport which is Echo Golf Lima Lima. We need to tell it that so we're not quite done. What we will do is you can either check it as it is, then insert temporary, it will turn green, and then you can continue from there. You some pilots choose to do that, making small sections of a temporary flight plan and putting it in, then making another, the next portion and putting it in. Others simply type everything up and then put it in altogether. That's your choice nothing is written in stone as to how to do this i'm going to continue here on the temporary flight plan this is just the departure setup anyway from fisto which is our last waypoint right here i want to do a lateral revision again so i will select now the number two key here fisto or wherever that fisto was i'll select that once i select that lateral revision from fisto i have the option here to select the next waypoint you notice that I do not have the option I had before for departure that is only available from the departing airport. I though can choose either to insert airways or to insert simply the next waypoint up here in the brackets on the line select data point for number three on the right side. But I want to insert airways as I have a long route that I want to insert. So I'll click over here on the airways and then I have this airways page which allows me to put in the airways and then an exit point airways exit point i will select or put in the scratch pad here uniform november 874 and i'll put that up to the airways entry point here and then it will ask me where do you want to fly to on this airway airways are a long not straight line a long route from one point to another and along this there are many waypoints 
Consider it a highway. If you're driving along a highway, you will see many exits along the way, crossing roads, intersections where you can get off. But if you need to get off on intersection or exit number 48, but you're currently at exit number 33, well then you don't care about the exits that are part of your route from 33 to 48, only where you need to get off. But that highway continues much further than that. And so does airways. Airways are highways in the sky. So when you insert an airway right here, you need to tell it where you want to get off at. In my case here, I'm going to take this airway to that point. And from that point, I'm going to get on another airway. I'll select, put in that airway, where I want to get off. I'll put in the next airway and where I want to get off. It's like a road network in the sky. But when I choose to put this into my temporary flight plan, it will have put in a lot more waypoints than just the exit points here. Because it actually puts in all the waypoints, all the exits along these airways so that you don't have to manually insert every single waypoint. And by the way, you can do that. But if you're flying from London to New York, I'm guessing you're not going to want to put in over 100 waypoints along your route. Airways allows you to put in a big chunk of waypoints in one go. You just have to identify the airway and tell it where you want to get off. You can continue this down to five entry points, then insert it into your active flight plan. Then you can continue the process until you have no more airways. Now I click insert. So it puts it into the flight plan and I'm now back on my flight plan page. I still have the option to insert everything, but I'm not quite done. And what I want to do right now is I want to look at my ND display in plan mode. And I want to look at the entire route from my departure, SID and the in route to make sure everything is sequenced. Sequence means that everything strings together and that there are no gaps. I don't have a waypoint selected that is way off that's giving me a massive detour for some reason. Once I have checked everything on the plan mode by scrolling through the waypoints here using the up or down key, I will go to my last point again, which in this case is DMAL, and I will check with my operational flight plan or my clearance if in fact I have all the waypoints in the entire in route set. In my case here, let's say that I don't. Let's say that there is one last waypoint that I need to cross over, which connects me into that star or approach for my arrival airport. But that's not part of an airway, and therefore I can select it using the airway function. Well, I have two ways I can now set in an individual waypoint. I can go to DMAL right here, click the lateral revision, or I can simply just type in the waypoint and then push it into the line below it. See where it says flight plan discontinuity? If I select the line select key number three right here, it's going to push it in, push everything else down, and kind of slide it in right there. And that became a direct fly from Dima to Aleso on the flight plan. Another way to do it, not as commonly used, but equally right to do is by going back to DML, click here, lateral revision, lateral revision, I can sim simply put in Aliso over here, next waypoint, and it'll give me the exact same layout. Either one is easy to do, but to save a few steps, it might be easier just to put it in and push it in where you want it. And yes, you can also insert waypoints in between two existing waypoints, simply type it in and put it in. But it will create a flight plan discontinuity if they don't string together. So always check it on your ND display in plan mode. Now we have the entire in route here, and Aleso is the last in route waypoint. I'm going to want now to set up my arrival information. And yes, you do have to set up the arrival information for departure. Do not leave this and consider this okay to be set up later. For the aircraft to give you accurate performance and fuel burn off, it needs a complete flight plan. 
Yes, it may change. The weather may change. It may be a different runway. You may get a different clearance. But you will set it in right now as estimated information and what type of approach you expect. It's the most common approach, which in most cases would be an ILS approach or, if not available, an RNAV approach. For me to do that, it's still a lateral revision. I will now click here, lateral revision, but from Echo Golf Lima Lima, which is my arrival. And by clicking there, I get this lateral revision at Echo Golf Lima Lima. But this has now the prompt over here on the right, which is the arrival. Clicking the arrival, it's going to be the same as departure. It's going to give me a list of the available runways for Echo Golf Lima Lima selecting the runway right there. It's going to put it up there and ask me if I want to do any standard arrival, a star. A star will put in waypoints leading into the approach itself, the same way that an SID did for departure. And I can also choose a via point right here. If I don't have a star, but I may have a point that I want to connect from my in route directly to the approach, I can do so. I'm going to be doing the BID3 Bravo star with BID as my via point. That means BIG will be my first point leading into the star, which should then connect from Aliso to BID for me to have a complete flight plan. Once I insert that, it's going to insert BID, the standard arrival, and the approach with its waypoints, course intercept, final approach fix and missed approach procedure right here and then say end of flight plan. I will check it one last time on my ND display before I hit insert. Once I hit insert, it's going to turn this green. The blue part here is the missed approach procedure at my destination and that will always be in blue. Below here, if you had selected, you had an alternate airport, you would be able to scroll further down and see a separate flight plan setup with a departure and an arrival airport where you will again build a separate flight plan, if you will, for the alternate as per your operational flight plan. We will come back to the flight plan once we have inserted all the information to look at the information as it's filled in. You can see there's a lot of data entries here that have not been filled in. And that's not for us to fill in. That is for the MCDU and flight management and guidance system to calculate and put in automatically. But that will only be done when it has all the information it needs. And we're not quite there yet. In our DIPS RIP acronym setup, let's go to the next part, which is my secondary flight plan. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.